Welcome to episode 3 from this photo critique series where I offer you tips and ideas on your landscape photos and travel photos. And also tips about composition, choosing a subject and post-processing technique. So I think it's a complete set of tips that are uh, related to photography in general and to landscape and travel photography in particular. Now, before we actually begin the episode, I stopped submitting um, photos for this photo critique. There is enough material for 12 episodes. And after those 12 episodes, we will begin something different, something maybe that is theme Base. We still have two open spots for the Tuscany workshop. If you're interested, check out the link in the description of this video. Now I think it's time to get on with the photo critique. So let's start with this photo from Vazrul Saltiani and it's on Fujifilm and it's enhanced on Snapseed. It's not, it doesn't matter what editing software you're using. So uh, let's judge first the composition and then the, the quality of the post-processing. In terms of compositions, I don't think this is the best uh, angle that you can find because your area of interest is formed by these two houses and you don't have enough composition elements to support all this. You should have had a longer line over here to kind of offer support for this area over here. Now in terms of uh, editing, uh, you need to be very careful because you have some chromatic aberrations and some problems that are um, for uh, technical problems if you if you understand what I mean uh, because um, it will look bad if you're if you're editing your photos if you start damaging your photo uh, technically then it looks it, it doesn't looks uh, it doesn't look okay uh, another thing is that it's strange to see the wires over here and not see them in water I don't know maybe they had a, another another reflection but for for me at least they should have been somewhere around here uh, I, it, it doesn't matter it's a really small thing but these were uh, these were the main areas of concern for this photo another one from Douglas Reed here is mine, so I must shoot at Gore Glen Waterfall, Midlothian, Scotland. Uh, from what it looks, this is a really beautiful place to go and photograph, and it's a, it's, it's a really great place to photograph during uh, during autumn, from what I see. So, um, six shot panel, two high, three wide, because I forgot my wide angle. Yes, this happens. <laughs> On Nikon D7200, Sigma 18 to 50. Okay, circular polarizer used an ND6. Been shooting for 2.5 years, used to shot 35 millimeter film on Canon SLR as teenager. Okay, so let's let's uh, analyze this. A very important aspect, um, or a very important technical thing is to be very careful with the red channel. This uh, happens especially during autumn and check your always check your histogram on channels because your red channel may be overexposed even though your general histogram looks okay. And this is something that I think I'm seeing over here. I'm not 100% sure but this may be the case why it, you don't see enough details over here. Maybe you have an overexposure on the red channel. Just check it. If it's not overexposed then just uh, take it um, as a future tip. Another very important aspect, for me at least, in my own photos, is the color correction. At this point, this photo is um, shifted to yellow-orange. I think that if you would have corrected better in terms of color, you would have had a better separation because this water would become a little bit darker and more towards blue and then this would be more green because right now it's more orange and yellow than green and I think this would have helped a lot in terms of post-processing it's okay uh, maybe this is a little bit more accentuated but it looks uh, it looks nice in terms of composition the waterfall it's placed really well in uh, in in the shot 
I'm not completely sure that this framing does justice to, to the shot. In a situation like this, I would try also to have a clean shot with the waterfall and the uh, and the forest. But this this doesn't look necessarily bad. It's uh, it it. My suggestion is to try always to find uh, more than one composition for the same subject, uh, just to have the opportunity to choose better. I don't like, for example, these elements that are not, let's say. Uh, <laughs> geometrically uh, correct all 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 this the the chaos i'm trying to eliminate for example in my photos all the chaos presumine ed canon 1300 d 10 millimeters 20 second exposure on a tripod okay uh this looks good this looks good um what you can do to improve it is to for example for me the main attraction is this area over here and you can uh, you can treat it like this as this area being your main focus point and then you can you can shot from a, from a from a further distance because this needs room to breathe inside your uh, your photo this is too much it's like a portrait shot and in landscape or I, I my personal preference is that you should have a better composition to support uh, the element and this means elements to your left and elements to your right that compensate with this one over here this is not a bad shot but I think this this could be better Dustin E. Hall hey Tom I'm looking forward for your cr critique by the looks of it you are going to be able to make it a regular thing this shot has been was taken in a city called oh my god Svaskila <laughs> okay Svaskila in Finland it was after sunset okay the main thing as I always uh, tell is that you should pick one main point as your interest of your photo and only one uh, in this case you have multiple multiple points that will attract your eye for example these boats will attract the eye the trail will attract the eye the light bulb over here will attract the eye and then you have also these light bulbs over here attracting the eye so you need to decide this over here it's one shot this over here it's another shot this is my advice to you for the future pick only one point of interest and concentrate only on that Douglas Reed one more from me again in Scotland I need to visit Scotland at some place because it, it I, I from from what I feel it has wild landscapes just like I'm exploring in my own Carpathians so uh, yeah, let's take a look at, at, at this image. I like the overall feeling of the of the image. It's dark, it's moody, it has it has a beautiful feeling to it. Uh, the the only that there's only one thing that I would have liked to see in a more uh, a much a much sharper image because from what I've seen, I see over here and over here and in the cabin, it it looks like the image it's not that sharp. I I know that. Oh, it looks like it's snowing but um, I don't know I would have liked to see a much more sharper image and always as, as an advice don't completely don't completely darken your images in the dark areas have some details over there especially if it's a color image if it's a black and white image then it may work to have completely loss of details in in dark areas but when it's a color image it's nice to see a little bit of detail in the in the shadows peter dreschler five shot panorama well if this is a five this, if this is a five image shot then i think you did it in um in landscape mode maybe next time try to do it in portrait mode the problem with a photo like this for example it's very difficult to print something like this and to look good because you need a very big 
size you would need at least one uh, 80 centimeters over here to look good uh, in in terms of how this photo looks uh, for uh, for me the most interesting part ends somewhere around here and mainly because of the sun if you would not have the sun in in the shot then maybe the entire panorama would work it's a pleasant image it's a calm image but i think uh, you should choose either this side or this side thomas dovidaitis canon 6d 16 to 35 millimeters f4 shot at f4 uh, first of all i recommend to to go f8 or f11 because you will get much uh, much sharper images it was called a foggy day the image looks good um, i like it the way it is maybe if i if i will if i would made if i would make something like this i would i would place this right in the center and give it a little bit more space around it but it looks great the way it is right now Lubomir Pout, sunrise at Antornal Lake. Antornal Lake, it's at the base of, or on the road that goes up to Auronzo Refuge. This is Trecime di Lavaredo. And uh, the image looks nice. The only, the only suggestion that I have, it's with this reflection over here. You need to, you need, I think my advice would be to position yourself in a way that you either have the water, the fog, and the mountain, or the reflection over here and the mountain. In terms of editing, be extra careful because this is a little bit too much. This, uh, the color in the clouds doesn't look bad. The color of the grass doesn't look bad. The trees, even though it's a little bit more green that I like, but it doesn't look that bad. But the, the color of the sky looks a little bit off. Okay, Canon Rebel T6, it's a composite. The sky was added after. Well, uh, <laughs> it's a funny thing because I, I looked at the description and I was wondering if this is a composite. And the reason for that is because the perspective doesn't match. First of all, let's talk about composition. As I mentioned before, this is your subject. Frame it in a way that has a composition supporting it. Don't frame, don't make the entire shot only with this your subject because it will look better when uh, when you have a composition supporting your subject and the reason for this is because the human brain will start thinking and when people start to think whenever they are looking at a photo at a painting or at a movie whenever they start to think they start to care about the image that is the uh, the reason now in terms of your composite um, it's very visible that this is another perspective so when you're doing composites use the same perspective for example you point and shoot this over here you you need to hold it the camera in the same way and shoot just the sky this is shot with the camera pointing up and this is not happening for example in the horizon it's it's clearly visible you don't have this in the horizon so this is the only problem the composite is is did is done acceptably well, but the main problem is your perspective. Martin Meyer, great idea, Tom. I'm looking forward to your critique episodes. This shot was taken during sunrise at a local viewpoint overlooking Schneeberg, the most northeastern mountain of the Alps, higher than 2,000 meters. Gear on Olympus, 52 millimeters three exposures okay the the landscape is absolutely breathtaking it looks so good and uh, my suggestion would be to lose the base trees because they don't add anything to your shot F for me the shot it's ha all happening over here and if you do a small crop then you're all set Another thing that you need to be extra careful is the horizon line. 
sometimes your horizon line is perfect like it is right now you have a perfectly horizontal horizon line and I know the trees are visible that are vertical but this cloud over here gives the impression <laughs> that your horizon line is tilted so you need to decide you either include an element like this that will prove that everything is, everything is okay but if you do the crop try a little bit rotating the photo this way the cropping and try to have this a little bit balanced even though it will be out of balance the the general impression will be okay but the photo the, the, the photo it's okay the exposure it's okay the editing it's okay it, I'm only I, I don't like these elements over here I don't think they add to the photo Jared Tobek Nikon D 750 with 24 to 70 millimeters and 35 millimeters f8 was fortunate okay was about 50 meters hiking to the top this photo is perfect and it looks great it's simple it has a, a really bright feeling to it and a low contrast and I really like it I don't have anything bad to say about it Dan Saxton McBee power of nature I want to get across the raw power of nature with this image and the feeling and thoughts I had upon finding this. What were the sounds, the effects and the atmosphere like in the woods when this fell? Well, I can tell you, I've, I, 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 I was hiking during the night and uh, a fir tree fell into the forest and the entire earth shook. Now, in terms of your image, your intention was okay to suggest the raw power of nature but it's not a pleasant image to look at and uh, the reason it's the clutter and the multitude of elements that is why for example I think this uh, this kind of shot would work better in a one by one cropping with a black and white conversion where you have all these other elements darken and the leaves and the trunk a little bit brighter and then by doing this post processing you only concentrate on what you really wanted to uh, express Gary Lord this is black waterfalls Canon 70D shot with kit lens thanks Tom okay in a situation like this where the sky it's almost white with no interesting clouds on it or it's all or it's simply a blue sky just lose it so your shot should be some somewhere from here and going down now <coughs> in terms of your uh, location from where you shot this the waterfall is beautiful but this is If I'm looking at this photo as it is, I, sh I would crop it like this and it will look kind of okay, but bef because you are up above the waterfall, you don't get to feel how big this waterfall is. And I realize it's pretty big because I, I see the trees over here, but you don't need to make this kind of assumptions. You need to see it and feel it just from the start. So. I don't know if you have the ability to go down and capture it like this in this direction looking at it like this looks okay but I think this shot would uh, could could be better and remember about the sky Charlene Nagel winter ice Niagara Falls I think this this is really this is really interesting I never saw an image like this maybe there are but I never saw them my only suggestion is to lose this small area over here just make a crop from here and down and that's it for me the photo looks okay just the cropping because if you don't crop it you'll have all sorts of small elements over here the bridge the road a little car all those details that you don't need in this photo you need only uh, you need the eye to only concentrate on 
on the ice and on, on water. And also be very careful not to lose detail, not to have overexposed areas when doing these long exposures. Andre Duncan Storhog, one fourth of a second, F11 ISO 116 millimeters, D500. Well, it's an interesting shot and it's it's a little difficult to to analyze i think because it's it's a little bit out of balance and the element that creates that pro the, the problem is this this is the element that creates the problem because it t it tilts the 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 balance to this side of the photo and creates a disequilibrium hope i i said it right in this area of the photo so in order to fix it you should have gone you should have went a few meters in this direction and have this element somewhere around here or you just clone it <laughs> but uh would have been better to have this over here because it will it would have created much more balanced image also um because of the lack of of cloud details in the sky you can crop it from here George Stanchu, the photo is taken from the car. Th it doesn't matter from where you you took the photo, as long as it's, it's if it's okay. Now, um, in terms of how you created this photo, the creation it's okay. No, okay from from what from what I see, but your decision to shot this was not okay. First of all it's better to have your subject in the upper part of the diagonal but then comes uh, after after that comes the decision whether it's worth photographing something or not and this particular scene over here it's not in my opinion at least it's not that interesting to photograph but if you if if for you it's it's worth photographing then the photo it's okay and I don't it's the maximum that you could have done in that situation Milan Vuzanik I shot the picture in a local village around Banha Luka Nikon okay well um, again we're coming back to the same thing that you need only one point of focus of uh, of the eye to focus on especially when you're doing this kind of a let's say minimal minimalistic shot it's not a completely minimalistic shot but it could have been because this is one of your photos this is another photo so you're basically having at least two photos in this and if you if you have a really long lens even this can be another photo so try and simplify things in the future. Damien McCudden, this is a sunrise at Moffat Beach, Australia. Yesterday morning it's a two-shot exposure, blending done in Photoshop and edited in Lightroom shot with Canon. Okay, let's take a look at it. Um, the, the horizon line is a little bit off and you have this element over here which it, it kind of bothers me because it's a little bit too small to to be a subject but it's also dark enough to draw the eye over there uh, from uh, I if if I would have to take a, to make a decision I would have excluded this from my shot and I don't know how big the water would how big the water is in this place but they these these places over here would look would have looked better as foreground elements other than that the exposure it's okay the the way you capture the water like this and having a sense of the motion of the water it's okay the editing it's okay just those uh, those minor things Honza Francis before uh, switching to full frame Canon 70D Takina I took it as a snapshot um, as I was 
packing up. I won several competitions with this photograph and the first one I ever printed in large. I personally love serenity and yogi feel to it. Well, the photo, it's 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 not uh, you need to remember this you you maybe you've won competitions with this photo but this is because the judges from those competitions liked this photo i like this photo but i will tell you what i don't like i don't like this element over here maybe if this element would have been edited like this in a much more bluer tone and a little bit darker would not draw the eye and also if this would have a little bit more detail in it other than that the photo it's okay in my personal preference i would have cropped it from here and maybe even from here this is something that that i see over here just just like this 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 cropping over here i think that would improve would improve this photo but it's a it's a personal preference uh, yes it has a zen feeling to it looking at the morning having these mists over here the feeling is great but i think this would be an improvement to your uh, to this photo this photo i already talked about i don't know exactly when but it doesn't need to be talked again you you my suggestion I, from what i remember was that this is too much clutter this is too much chaos your main subject is the bridge so move over to, over to the bridge and photograph it massimo santoro massimo has some some really beautiful photos uh, this is between life and death and i think this this photo has this name because of um, of the area of light and darkness the image looks great the image looks looks okay I don't know if black and white would look better because I really like the bluish tint on this uh, on this image image but the idea it's great and maybe maybe uh, beside this composition maybe tr uh, if you have a much more closer composition maybe try something like this and see if it looks much more powerful and, and maybe has a, a, a much more clear separation between darkness and light and having this element at the, at the border between these two. Jean-Claude Sicard, Bradley Lighthouse Sydney with a Canon 80D. Well, uh, the entire feeling of this image is great. <laughs> the only f thing that looks strange is that the this bridge doesn't have a railway over here and because of that I think this looks okay but I think if I think I would have tried creating a much more diagonal line with this bridge so positioning myself a little bit to to the right and shooting in this direction because the the rail lacks over here it it gives me the feeling that it's kind of i don't know it it, it creates a disequi disequilibrium <laughs> it's a really hard a really difficult word to say but other than that i like it i really like that i re i really like a little bit of light that you introduced here from post processing it looks okay and the last image from David Pollock, the reunion. Okay, it's it's a it's a image it's it's an image that if your image is about this, then uh, this should not be here, and then if you're doing this type of images, you need to change the lighting and to create a much more interesting atmosphere. This was it for episode three of this photo critique series. And I want to thank you all for submitting your photos because it takes a lot of courage to take your own photo, submit it to a place and have a guy like me uh, critiquing your work in basically front of everybody. Just remember that it's only my own opinion and other photographers may think differently of 
the same photo. And I'm not trying to put you down with, uh, with any negative comment that I make. That is why I'm trying to offer comments that both offer you a constructive, a constructive uh, critique, but also offer you a motivation uh, to go on. You need to accept that every photographer that is just starting it's going to create crap in the beginning and then his or her work will start to develop and become better and better and better. Now, thanks for watching. Maybe you'll decide to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you are already subscribed, thanks for uh, your support and your comments and your shares. And until next time, keep on photographing. It's the only way that you can get better. Bye bye.